And of course, um, and then I got a note from the office at uh, at Pro Wrestling Conquest uh, that says I was uh, 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 legally required. I don't know. They signed David Lawless here to have our guest. Although we will welcome him with open arms. He's a, a good, longtime friend of the show joining us right now. Jock Sampson, the Imperial Champion at Pro Wrestling Conquest, is joining us. Jock, are you on the line here with us? Yeah, I'm right here, man. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little late here. I'm, uh, you know, uh, little, started drinking a little late today, later than I usually do. So I'm just sitting out here relaxing in my garage that I own, unlike the majority of professional wrestlers out there living fucking apartments and they don't know how to mow their fucking grass or anything but it, it, it's a wonderful day to be on your show and i appreciate it very much so so this is a big show coming up first of all you're the imperial champion for yes. conquest i've never seen an imperial champion with with pro, with pro wrestling groups well I, that's because uh i'm the champion like if you really think about emperors and pro wrestling you know when you think of West Virginia, you think of me, the emperor of West Virginia. I am the Darth Vader of professional fucking <laughs> wrestling in West Virginia. I think I think you need it's to change somewhere. you need to change your theme music. I think a little bit there, right? So no, no, no. I'm gonna keep Ronnie Millsap, man. There ain't okay. nothing better than the sap. I mean, you know, the only difference between me and Darth Vader is he's got asthma and I don't. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm the Imperial, cha Imperial Champion of uh, Pro Wrestling Conquest, which means I am the best wrestler in the state of West Virginia. That's exactly what that means. And, and Pro Wrestling Conquest is the number one up-and-coming promotion in West Virginia, the Midwest, the East Coast. The shit they're doing it is, is on fire, and it just happens to be that I'm the guy on top. And I believe, have you been there since day one with Conquest? At least very early, correct? Well, I wasn't on the first show. Uh, I was on their second show and, and, and after that. Mm -hmm. They tried to get me, but, uh, you know, I'm a man about. You know, I, they use me a good bit everywhere in the world. But then once I realized uh, that, that Conquest was, was a good place to be, then I, I started adjusting my schedule around. Mm-hmm. Definitely, it's definitely a, a a group that the crowd has been uh, growing. Uh, so in in conquest, and we'll show a little bit of footage. He's on on video of uh, what that looks like down there. I think this is uh, going into your match with uh, Danhausen, actually. So you you are teamed up there with, uh, of course, David Lawless. I know you got some history up here in the Pittsburgh area with, and of course, uh, uh, Ryan Edmonds, who we're very familiar with at RWA. Uh, so, so tell tell people that don't know, like what what is the office? What are you know, what are you guys doing there in Conquest? We are the gold standard in pro wrestling in West Virginia. We're three guys who are very familiar with each other, real good friends. We all hang out afterwards, and we realize that together nobody there can beat us anywhere. You know, I've known David when when I was a regulator when we were regulators. And uh, there's not a person I trust more to handle all my, uh, you know, judicial needs. Like he is a consigliere of Jock Sampson. He is my consigliere. And then Ryan Edmonds, me and him go back 15, 20 years. And there's not a guy, if I was in a bar tomorrow night or tonight, that if shit went down, that I would like to have right there with me. He is that guy. The three of us together are mighty as one. But. To be fair, none of us need each other to win. It's just nice to have around to watch each other's back because you got a piece of shit like Cole Carter and his store-bought muscles and, uh, you know, got to keep him and his family from fucking touching me and shit. Uh, yeah, we've, we've filmed a couple of Cole Carter's matches. Uh, the family does come out and is a very strong uh, uh, voice out there for sure. Um, and, and is that his mother that gets involved from time to time? That's his mom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. His mom thinks she's tough as hell. She ain't. She's a hillbilly from Sissonville, West Virginia. She probably just got shoes last week. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, you know, honestly, let me ask you guys. What is it that Cole Carter is doing that's making people go, ooh? And I could tell you why, but I want to hear what you guys got to say. What is about Cole Carter that makes him so special? Uh, I think it's the hair. Is my side of things, and these guys aren't, aren't quite as familiar with Cole Carter, I think, unless you guys. I, I Cole Carter has obviously made some appearances on AEW Dark in the last uh, couple of months, 
too. But uh, but I mean, he's I don't know. He's only like a year in the business as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, yeah, he's about a year in. So you know, Cole Carter looks like ten million dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. he is a tough kid. Oh, for sure. He's, he's a very fine professional wrestler, but he's getting all these opportunities all across the world. I've been wrestling for 15 years. I've been beating the shit out of everybody, but I'm not going to get an opportunity. For one, probably because my physique, I have a beer gut, mm -hmm. but I'm strong as a bull moose. I can shoulder press 285 pounds over the top of my head. You know, I got calves the size of Montana. My quads are as big as Texas. But everyone just can't get past the fact that I have this big, huge beer gut that I just nonstop drink. And you know what? That doesn't make me less of an athlete than him. I throw a better drop kick than he does, but I don't have to do it because I'm not a fucking show off like Cole Carter. Mm -hmm. It should honestly be me wrestling on AEW, getting all these spots on AEW. I've been all over the goddamn world. I wrestled the fucking honky tonk, man, and I ain't on goddamn fucking TV. Cole Carter gets to wrestle me once. That motherfucker's all over TV because someone up there likes the way he looks. It's about attraction, not skill. If it was about skill, I'd be on there tomorrow. I'd be on there right now. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's not like it's not like with uh, 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 wrestling, we don't have, let's say, quote unquote, real men's bodies represented. Trevor Murdoch just winning the NWA championship just last week, for instance. Yeah, like one in a million. You know, mm -hmm. one in a million. There ain't no one in in, in wrestling right now that's going to out charisma me, going out fucking personality me. Personality, I can't even fucking say it. No one's got more personality than me. No one can walk into a goddamn bar in pro wrestling right now and clean that motherfucker out, but me. I don't sit around playing fucking video games. I don't do comic books. I don't do Dungeons and Dragons. I don't sit around and. Uh, you know do cosplay shit mm -hmm. i don't do none of that you know what i do i own a home i work on my tractor i fix my tractor i work on my truck i fix my truck i'm blue collar and i think a lot of people out there have prejudice against people that grew up in the country cole carter comes dressed in them pretty tights he tries to freaking hide the fact that he's from west virginia he, he's embarrassed the fact that he's from west virginia he covers up the fact that he's blue collar. I am blue collar as it gets. I am a redneck. And there's a lot of misconceptions out there that people, when they think of me, they, they, they automatically believe what they think. They think Jock Sampson's a bigot. Well, Jock Sampson ain't no bigot. Jock Sampson's a live free and die hard motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what people do in their free personal fucking time. I don't give a shit as long as it don't affect me. But people are going to have their misconceptions about me. And, and for the most part, they can just go fuck off. I don't care about them. I don't care anything bad happens to them. They can kiss my ass. But it's a God's honest truth. I'm being held back because people that live in the country, there's a lot of prejudice towards us because of, of some shitheads that live around here. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants a fucking – I'm a real-life fucking country boy, okay? There ain't no fucking playing around on that. I'm not some guy playing a fucking gimmick. So you ain't no fucking gimmick. You're saying you're you're trying to bring you're trying to raise up the name of the country boy in professional wrestling in 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 the world right now. Well, I'm not really trying to do any. I'm trying to bring my name up. Yeah, I just have to be a country boy. You know, I did 4-H growing up. You know, I had cows. Shit, I go deer hunting. I know a lot of people are probably mad because poor mean Jock Sampson kills fucking Bambi. You know. If I was, if, let me just say this: If I hid and lied about who I was, I probably would have got a lot further. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of bias and prejudice towards country people, because to be fair, a lot of people who live in the country are very backward with their think, their thought process. Like people in West Virginia, they're very backward in their thought process. You know, they're backward as, as they have teeth. They don't have very many fucking teeth. I'm from Ohio. I live in southeastern Ohio, where us country people are educated. You know, but then you got a guy like Cole Carter who's just trying to prove that I'm just not country. I'm like everyone else. Watch me do these fucking stupid backflips. <laughs> Watch me do these fucking moves that make no fucking sense. I do less than anybody in wrestling, and I get more out of it than that fucking Cole Carter anybody. Trust me. I do less and get more out of that. 
that all these motherfuckers that ain't got no personality getting fucking flips. They're getting these fucking opportunities on TV because they shave the fucking body hair off their body and they can look, they look, look at his tope. Fuck you. Fuck your flips. Fuck Cole Carter. Fuck anyone don't like country people. And many of you guys don't like it on here on this, on this show here. You can go fuck yourself too. I don't really give a fuck. Well, going in that, it, it, I think case in point, last show you had, we're showing a little bit of footage here in the background for everybody on video, but you, you had a very interesting challenge in uh, Dan Housen. And again, one of those, not a lot of flips, not a lot of those things, but probably one of the biggest reactions of the night. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you had two guys that have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. You have a guy who's got a big following, which I, to be honest, I don't really understand. I don't get it. But he does. You know, I have just as many fans as he does, and I've told people this. I have just as many fans as Dan House, but my fans actually have jobs. They work for a living. They don't have time to get on Twitter and troll people and talk shit. You know, they, ain't got, they, they don't have a comic book collection or fucking trade Pokemon cards or if that even a fucking thing anymore. It is. I have just as many fans as he does. Mm -hmm. And I won. I beat his ass. I showed everyone that I was a better professional wrestler than him. There you go. And that was Plain part. Of, simple. That was part of uh, Pro Wrestling Conquest in your housing, of course. Uh, you do have some friends in the chat room. Uh, your buddy uh, Ryan Edmonds is out there. Jock Sam's is the greatest all time. Show him respect, and he says, "I'm going to smack that bitch." I think we're talking about Cole Carter at that point. Uh, pretty much. Yes. Yep. Ryan Edmonds, I love you. You're my, you're one of my best friends in this whole world. Ride or die, motherfucker. Uh, Tina from Seattle is asking, still causing divorces. The what? Still causing divorces? Yeah. I'm married, but I don't really give a shit. You know, <laughs> I, I do what I want when I want. If there's a woman out there, you know, and I'm into, that's what I'm into. I'm not going to judge anyone for doing what they want, but that's what I want to do. If my wife, she can leave me at any time, but she don't because I make a lot of goddamn money being a professional fucking wrestler. Mm -hmm. I do what I want, and of course I'm causing fucking divorces. And I really don't care if I am or not. Once I'm done, I'm done. I don't give a shit. Once I've had a good time and hung out with a pretty lady, I don't give a fuck after that. So, of course, this show, this show coming up this Friday, it's going to be on pay-per-view on IndieWrestling.Live, of course. Uh, first time for Pro Wrestling Conquest. It's uh, the first all-tag team show that they, they've booked here. Of course, our friends, the main event, uh, a part of that, uh, Facade and Kincaid, uh, Generation Dead, Gory and G. Raver, Lenny and Lodi from WCW are a part of this. Before we get into what you're doing, what do you think about this, um, the, the, the tag team division that you're seeing come in? I know you're not directly involved in it, but it's got to be interesting to see all this talent come in. Well, it, it's kind of refreshing to see a wrestling promotion actually give the fans what they want. And I know you guys, from what I heard, there was a wrestling promotion that was pretty big on TV that, that gave people what they wanted. And a lot of people in West Virginia and surrounding areas, they love tag team wrestling. I mean, it goes all the way back to the Rock and Roll Express, to the Midnight Express, uh, the Freebirds, uh, I mean, the Road Warriors, you could go on. This is what they grew up on. They love tag team wrestling because that's what made professional wrestling in West Virginia. People were hounding uh, – promoter uh you know Derek Stowers saying come on man we we want tag team wrestling and then the main event hopped in on it and started pushing for it and honestly I think it's very good for pro wrestling because it's a very different thing that people West Virginia has never seen mm -hmm. an all-inclusive tag team show for tag team titles and uh I mean you look at some of the talent you had that you you just you just announced off there up and down the card I mean Main event matches all over the place. That could be main events anywhere in the world. I know it's cliche, but, I mean, the main event, one of the best tag teams I've ever seen in my entire life. We disagree on a lot of ways, but there's no reason why they're not on TV. Money Shot and the Dime Piece, two of the hardest working guys that, that, that I'm proud to call friend. They're out there busting their ass. They're grinding. They're making names for themselves, and they're doing it their way. And then uh, I'm trying to let me let, read some of the matches off. Uh, of well, we got the time. Awakening. We got uh, the Outrunners, uh, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton from uh, Impact Wrestling. Well, there you go. Uh, you got Madman Fulton and Ace Austin. I mean, tag teams, you know, uh, up at Impact. Very good tag team. I I've never heard of the, you say, the, the front runners or the? Uh, the Outrunners. Yeah, they're new to me as well. I've uh, never met him, but I've heard good things, and, and it's just, I mean, 
if you like tag team wrestling, if you like wrestling in general, this is the show that you want to come to. I mean, we've showed you at the last show with uh, in your housing what Pro Wrestling Conquest can do. Mm-hmm. We showed everyone what we can do in pro wrestling, and 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 we're a completely different product in West Virginia from what what they're used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, we de- were, I've definitely yeah. never seen a promotion in West Virginia like this. Um, so it's 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 really it it is really refreshing, and and it's been definitely for us on the production worth the drive to Charleston to see what you guys have in store every month. So. Oh, I, I mean, and 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 to think that we've had shows that's had Coca Bana, mm-hmm. Al Snow, Fall Out Ba. Um, I mean, the, the number, I, I can't remember. We've had Mance Warner. We had Sandman show up the last show with Shane Douglas. Yeah, yeah. And drink beer with the crowd. I mean, we had about four or 500 people in a building, and we're just starting. We're just building it up. It is the number. It will be, if it ain't already, it will be the number one wrestling promotion in the state of West Virginia. That's going to piss a lot of people off, and I really don't care. Uh, I, I very – very where i live maybe five minutes from from the state of west virginia right now as we speak and i work for one promotion and occasionally i will do a show here or there like this this friday and saturday i'm in west virginia and mullins a place where i started my wrestling career and i'm doing one more show there and then conquest will be the only promotion in the state of west virginia that that you can see me at Mm -hmm. and what conquest is doing also they're giving you guys that you can't just like see the problem with west virginia wrestling and a lot of it's like in Pennsylvania, Ohio, you'll have five promotions in one town. And you'll see 25 guys that work for all five of those promotions. They're all drawing the same. They're all drawing 60 freaking people, right? And then they always talk about, we want to work together. I don't think people need to work together. They need to worry about their own business and try to draw something, try to be different. If you got 50, 60 people per show and you got the same 20 people, it's the problem. You're oversaturating your product. If the Beatles played in Pittsburgh for two weeks straight, for maybe let's say for a whole month, every night, the same venue, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. No one, I mean, it would couple first couple nights, people like, oh, cool, the Beatles. Then after a while, it'd be the same old shit. You know, love, love me do over and over again. I mean, you can't oversaturate a product. Pro- wrestlers need to understand with promoters that if you overuse your wrestlers, then they're not going to be as effective. Mm-hmm. You know, you just, uh, I mean, I know you can't tell a guy where to wrestle and whatnot because it's their job. Promoter could be smart enough and say, well, I can't use it because you're, you're wrestling there. And I just don't want to, you know, cross up the streams a little bit. I don't want to confuse anybody. Absolutely. Every promotion should have different people. Every single one. So of course you're the singles, you're the you're the main champ, the imperial champion here. Uh but you you are involved in this tag team show in a in a tag team. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're what you're gonna be doing here Friday? Well, it, it comes to be that uh, you know, granted I am the heavyweight champion, I'm the imperial champion, and I'm just not happy with that. If you're gonna have a tag team show, you need the imperial champion there to have an opportunity to become a tag team champion. So stipulation has came out that Cole Carter and I get to pick each other's uh, uh, partner. Now it could be anybody. And we're not going to announce it until the night of the show, until the match comes up. We're not announcing it. Like, it could be anybody. Mm -hmm. It could be the honky-tonk man. It could be Greg the Hammer Valentine. It could be Dan Housen. It could be Effie, and remind me later on to come back and talk about Effie if you want. Okay. I would like to have a couple minutes to talk about him, but it could be anybody. Big, big John Studd's kid. You know, Vince McMahon could be that spot, but I doubt it. <laughs> he wouldn't have the vision to get to the building. But it could be anybody. He could pick anybody for me. And he then- could pick his mom. And this is and this is a part of the tournament too. Like this is, I thought this was a one-off sure. one. I didn't realize that you guys are actually in the the entire tournament. You see, the thing is, is I want all the championships. I want them all. Mm-hmm. I want to be the heavyweight champion, the tag team champion. I want that. I deserve that. And I've given, I've gotten the opportunity. So, all the all the winners of the matches go into a battle royal on the later on that, that later on that night, for the chance to become the first ever imperial. Uh, Pro Wrestling Conquest Imperial Tag Team Champions. I was the f- I'm the first and only heavyweight champion. I want to be 
part of the first and only tag team champions. First ever. I want to be that guy. Because if well, I'm I, about 20 years from now, when Pro Wrestling Conquest is around, and I'm probably done gone with wrestling, I want people to look back and say, man, that Jock Sampson was there. This is his promotion. He made this promotion. The office made this promotion. So anytime you think of the, the Pro Wrestling Conquest, I want you to think of me and the office. That's what I want. So I, 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 I'm not going to tell anybody who it's going to be. He, I'm sure that piece of shit's not going to tell anybody who my partner's going to be. No. So we'll, we'll just have to show up and find out. It'll be interesting to see what, how that's going to go. Uh, I'm really curious. No hints? No hints? No no, no, no little tidbits? No, no. Could be, I might pick you, Mike Sorg. I'm, I'm going to be busy in the back, but I, I, I hope not. So is Chachi, is Chachi and his balls going to be available? We can, pray, we can, we can check his schedule if you'd like. So. I'd love to kick him in the nuts again. <laughs> Well, I'm sending him that clip. Um, but anyways, uh, you mentioned Effie. I wanted to give you a second to, to mention what you would like to there. Oh, okay. And I'll make sure, you know how you do these cuts mm -hmm. where you cut a piece out? I want you to cut this, and I want you to send it to him. I want him to see this. Okay. I'm not going to hide behind anything. I was on a show with Effie, Old Wrestling, in Norwalk, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in the same room as him, having a conversation with a bunch of other people. And then I get to the show the next day, and I see this long line of people there to see him, and I just don't understand it. Very talented. He's a great professional wrestler. He really is. But I don't get why all these people are, are clamoring over him. I'm sitting right across the room. Got my own table. And I know my fans can't afford to, you know, because they, they got to work on that Sunday. They can't actually get up and go to the shows because, they, they, like I said, they work for a living. You know, they, they're blue collar. They're not white collar. They don't sit behind a computer and uh, and do that. But uh, all these people went and spent some time with him, and I'm over there looking like, you know, I don't get it. And then I heard later that he was talking shit about my drinking. Uh -oh. Thanks, I drink too much. Well, Effie, you know, I don't, you know, care about what you have to say. I think you need to mind your own fucking business because one of these days – you're going to see me in a locker room, and I'm just going to walk up and smack you in the fucking mouth. I don't fucking play around. You're going to get my country ass if you don't be careful. So enjoy all your fans. Enjoy all the shit. But if I ever see you around, this ain't going to be in a locker room. Anywhere I see you, you better grab your best hold then. Have you, have, you have you had an encounter with Effie in the ring? I've never had a wrestling match with him. I, I think I know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He don't think I don't think he wants to wrestle me. Well, that maybe that needs to happen sooner than later. I think you tell you tell anybody out there that that you know I don't want a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. I could out wrestle anybody. Uh, you know I want to fight. I ain't playing around. I see you. I'm beating your ass. There it is. There you go. There you go. Well, I'll be looking out for that happening for sure in the future. So, uh, Jock Sampson, thank you so much for joining us. Again, uh, the uh, the Bookmore Tag Matches You Cowards show with Pro Wrestling Conquest. It's If you uh, can get to Charleston, West Virginia, it's going to be a fun show in person. It's, it's a hell of an experience, uh, uh, Jock. I mean, that, that crowd is definitely one of those that uh, uh, is unpredictable, I guess you could say. Um, I would say unpredictable because West Virginia's never experienced anything like this. This mm -hmm. is, you know, completely fresh. I mean, you got a little bit of everything. You got high, you got high flying action all the way down to making people laugh. Mm -hmm. It's a little something for everybody, and they also serve beer. Yes, that's. And, then, it, and you said something. You had that uh, that goober uh, Daniel Weeds on here with his Pokemon hat. The, the Dragon Ball, actually, but but yes. What the, what's the difference? it's fucking nerd culture shit you know i think me more people need to be out working and pushing mowing their yards and you know building decks on their porches and stuff instead of man i gotta get back i gotta play uh call of duty i don't even know what the fuck people are playing now my daughter's got a nintendo switch i don't play that shit mm -hmm. you know so i don't get it I don't get Dan. I'd like to kick his ass too. Well, well, e Eats has been coming up in pro wrestling conquest pretty much. You see a confrontation with him in the future? 
I don't think he's in my league. I, I think he's great. Mm -hmm. But I don't wrestle people who uh, live in the nerd culture anymore. I, I don't uh, I don't understand it. All right. All right. We'll like, see. I don't like why aren't professional wrestlers like going out and get shit faced? Or, no, I mean, I mean, going out and having fun. I'm not saying drink. A lot of people don't drink and I don't bully people into drinking. But what happened about having a good time? I got you. What happened to that? What happened? Like, I mean, is it only about the wrestling match? I mean, you got to experience something. I don't get it. I drive by this comic book store. And line every first Saturday of the month, they got a line out the door. I don't get it. I've never read a comic book in my life. Well, I read Sports Illustrated and Playboy growing up, mainly Hustler. <laughs> it was more graphic. It was more like a graphic novel. Well, uh, if anybody wants to help Jock with his existential crisis here, uh, you are on Twitter. You are on social media. Where can people reach out to you? Well, you just go to Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Snapchat. You type Jock Sampson in, S-A-M-S-O-N. There's no P in Sampson. Yep, made that mistake uh, early. A lot of motherfucker. Yeah, you don't put a fucking P in my name. Sorry about that. It's it. That's right. It's Sampson, like the Bible. Yeah, that's ex that, That's exactly what he yelled at me from across the gym. Yes. So my first finisher in wrestling was called Delilah. So nice. Yeah, that yeah, was a little tidbit there. There you go. But but I appreciate you having me on your show. It's nice meeting all you gentlemen. Uh, just make sure you tell people that I'm not the bad guy. I'm just a guy that speaks this from his heart. I don't understand why people want to go around being villainized. I, I, I don't understand it, but I guess since I speak my mind, that I guess it makes me the bad guy, and so be it. So it was a very pleasure meeting you all, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. There you go. Thank you, Jock Sampson. Yeah. You're an absolute gentleman and a scholar whenever we have we have you on this show. And, uh, I'll see you Friday. We'll see you Friday. And you guys can all see that Friday. Once again, that will be part of Indie Wrestling Live, the pay-per-view over there, $9.99 over there. And, of course, it will be on VOD afterwards for our friends at Pro Wrestling Conquest. It's going to be a very, hey. very big show. And I will be doing uh, the play-by-play, -play, I mean, the caller commentating with Joe Dombrowski also. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, I will be there. So get make sure you get on there and you listen to all the dumb shit that I'm going to say. Because I'm going to say some dumb shit. Listen, you just you just got about 20, 30 minutes of Jock with a live mic on the internet. Imagine what he's going to say when you have that's behind a paywall. Okay, exactly. so I mean, I, I don't I don't think Pro Wrestling Conquest has any uh, limitations on language, and and we're going to give you a live mic for an extended period of time on there during wrestling matches. Uh, that's going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be something for sure. It's going to be like sticking your hand in an alligator's mouth. There you go. And and Joe's the one that's going to have to juggle that alligator. So there you go. Uh, so uh, go check that out. All that, of course, uh, with uh, Indie Wrestling Live. Thank you so much, Jock Samson, for joining us. Yeah, la, la <laughs> Thanks.